Okay, let's look at the beta elimination of halo alkanes. This is a common reaction mechanism alongside nucleophilic substitution of these uh, halo alkanes. So uh, this reaction is also known as dehydrohalogenation. D meaning loss of and hydrohalogenation meaning the hydrogen and the halogen on the molecule. So it produces alkenes from the halo alkane. And it normally uses strong bases such as hydroxide, uh, alkoxides, um, very strong amines and amides. Um, it competes often with nucleophilic substitution reactions. So often we may see a mixture of products when we treat a halo alkane with a nucleophile that can also act as a base. So remember, nucleophiles have negative charge and they're seeking positive charge. And bases are very similar. They they have often a negative charge or partial negative charge, and they're seeking a proton or a Lewis uh, acid. So they're going to be uh, good at pulling a proton off a molecule. So for example, if we have a halo alkane like this one here, and we treat it with sodium ethoxide, which we form from ethanol by treating it with little uh, chunks of sodium, and uh, so you get this strong nucleophile, which is also a strong base. Uh, it will um, not only act as a nucleophile, but it will also pull off the proton here. Electrons go over here, and then we kick out the leaving group, and we end up making an alkene plus an alcohol from the alkoxide and uh, an inorganic salt as a byproduct. So um, if we use a, a strong base such as potassium terpetoxide on a, a terminal alcohol bromide like this, then we can get a terminal alkene, so in this case, uh, one octene. If we did the reaction with um, a strong base and a tertiary alcohol bromide, we find that there's two possible products. There's either the double bond within the ring or the double bond uh, external or exo to the ring. And it turns out that the major product is uh, this one where the double bond is within the ring. And there's a general rule around this called Zaitsev's rule. So the rule is the major product of most of these beta elimination reactions is the more substituted alkene. So what do we mean by more substituted? Here we've got a uh, alkene with one hydrogen and three carbon centered groups or two uh, or three alkyl groups. Here we've got a uh, alkene with two carbon or alkyl groups. And so therefore, Zaitsev's rule says that this should be the favored product. And that's a general rule that we can apply to these beta elimination reactions. There's two major mechanisms, there's actually more than that, but there's two that we'll cover, uh, two major mechanisms for elimination reactions. Uh, the first is the E1 uh, mechanism. The rate of this reaction is only related to the concentration of the halo alkane times the rate constant. So this is very similar to the SN1 reaction mechanism uh, that you might have seen before. So the rate determining step in this uh, reaction is the ionization of the carbon halogen bond. So we need to break that carbon halogen bond to make a carbocation. And you might recognize this is the same first step as an SN1 substitution reaction. So once we film that carbocation, it can then combine with a nucleophile via a SN1 reaction pathway, or it can undergo an elimination. So we can get a base come in, take off these protons here, break that bond there to make a alkene such as this, and we form the conjugate acid of the base that we used over here. So um, the other major uh, elimination reaction mechanism is the E2 mechanism. So this is where the elimination all happens in one step with bond breakage and bond formation all happening at the same time. So we would normally have a strong base like ethoxide, it pulls off a proton, we break this bond here and we lose the leaving group all in one go. The stronger the base, the more likely we are to get an E2 reaction mechanism. And the rate of the reaction rely, uh, is uh, related to the uh, rate constant times the concentration of the halo alkane times the concentration of the base. So very similar to uh, the uh, rate 
equation for an SN2 reaction mechanism. So uh, similar to substitution reactions, we can see some general trends in terms of which types of reagents favor which pathway. So with a primary alcohol halide, we don't get E1 reaction mechanisms because they go via a carbocation. And we know that primary carbocations are very uh, unfavored. So the E2 elimination mechanism is favored when we have a primary alcohol halide. Similarly, if we have a tertiary alcohol halide, E1 is the main reaction mechanism because uh, we know that carbocations are relatively favored. And so weak bases um, such as water and alcohols will uh, be involved in E1 reaction mechanisms uh, that involve tertiary carbocations. However, a bit different to sub uh, nucleophilic substitution reactions, E2 can be the main reaction profile when we have uh, strong bases such as hydroxide or alkoxides. Uh, and then in the middle here, secondary alcohol halides uh, can go via E1 or E2. Um, and once again, it's down to what base we're using. So strong bases will favor E2, uh, whereas weak bases will favor um, E1. And the weak bases are things such as water and uh, alcohols that don't have a negative charge. Okay, so looking at um, substitution versus elimination, we often have a competition between these two possibilities. So secondary and tertiary haloalkanes in polar uh, product solvents give mixtures of substitution and elimination products. Both these reactions go via the carbocation intermediate. So the products form depend only on the structure of this intermediate. So uh, whether we have um, an alcohol uh, iodide or an alcohol chloride, if it's a tertiary alcohol halide, then we generate the same uh, tertiary carbocation as an intermediate, and it can go via an E1 elimination pathway, or an SN1 substitution pathway, or an SN1 substitution pathway with a different um, solvent here. Uh, if we look at SN2 versus E2, Branching at the alpha carbon or the beta carbon increases the steric hindrance around the carbon that undergoes the reaction. And that really uh, slows down the rate of SN2 reaction. And so the rate of E2 reaction is increased because it doesn't rely so much on, um, a, it doesn't rely on attacking that carbon that um, is attached to the leaving group. Uh, the second point to note is the greater the nuclear felicity of the attacking reagent, the greater the amount of uh, uh, nucleophilic substitution versus elimination. And the greater the basicity of the attacking reagent, the lower this uh, ratio, so the more elimination we'll get. So a base attacks at this proton here, and so it doesn't mind too much if there's bulky groups around these positions here. Whereas in SN2, the nucleophile attacks at the carbon bearing the leaving group. And so it's very important whether those uh, groups, um, either on the, the carbon bearing the leaving group or adjacent to it, whether we have steric hindrance there. So overall, we can look at some, uh, some general guidelines and rules around substitution versus elimination. So methyl alcohol halides will uh, undergo SN2 reaction and not SN1, and we can't get elimination because we don't have a carbon attached to that group bearing the leaving group. Primary alcohol halides will favor SN2 or E2, but we'll never get any of the SN1 or E1 because we can't form uh, stable carbocations. Secondary alcohol halides can pretty much do everything, and what we get depends on what solvent we're using, what nucleophiles we're using, and so on. And finally, tertiary alcohol halides Never do SN2 because that um, carbon with the leaving group is so hindered. They can do E2 and they'll do that with strong bases. Or they can do SN1 or E1 with poor nucleophiles or, or weak bases. Okay, so hopefully that um, clarified some of the issues around elimination reactions. The two major mechanisms, E1, where we generate a carbocation and then that reacts with a base to eliminate to give an alkene, or E2, where we get the base come in and pull off the proton at the same time as we form the alkene, at the same time as the leaving group departs. And uh, hopefully this video showed you a few of the important factors to help you determine which mechanism is likely to occur. Okay, thanks for watching.